Hello, everyone. Bonjour. Yes, this is this is my best what I know in French. Uh, okay. So I've seen this uh, tweet. Oh, we start the morning with two sessions in English. I'll do my best to speak uh, clear, loud, so your awakening will be enjoyable. I, I'll, I'll do my best. Uh, but our topic is quite, uh, quite uh, complex uh, for today, so this is really good that we all have our fresh brains uh, to new to learn something um, about service workers. And let's start. Um, in my session, I want to uh, went through some um, points uh, of uh, what we know about progressive ABAPs, about service workers uh, after three years of this idea in the production. And this June, it will be like exactly three years. And uh, what to do next with uh, all this knowledge and experience. My name is Maxim Salnikov. Um, so it's l always uh, almost French name, but without E on the end. Uh, I live in Oslo, so I came uh, to from uh, Norway yesterday. And I run a bunch of meetups and a um, couple of conferences. And um, yeah, everything around uh, web and mobile or web plus mobile, which is progressive web app. From this slide, uh, please um, note my Twitter handle. It will be very useful for you. Why? Because um, today's slide deck is kind of one third of my, say, master slide deck dedicated to uh, many, many points about progressive web apps and service workers. Uh, and you will find the full version of um, uh, this uh, content, this material on my Twitter. I believe uh, I pinned uh, this um, tweet to the top. It's called uh, service worker. What have we learned? Something like this. So. That could be useful. Uh, before we start, let's uh, remind, let's recall what is progressive web app uh, at all. And um, on Wikipedia, you will find this classic uh, definition with uh, some points about uh, characteristic of a progressive web app. And who can tell me how many of these uh, characteristics, like bullet points? Right, 10. Uh, but today, uh, we go differently. Uh, I want to introduce you a uh, definition from Mozilla Developer Network. And uh, Mozilla Developer Network is, um, I'd say it, it's the best source of uh, documentation about uh, web APIs and especially uh, about modern web uh, stuff. And since I took some part in finding this uh, definition together with folks from uh, MDN, uh, let me uh, give you my uh, perception of uh, what is PWA. So it's very simple. We just uh, create uh, our web apps, like JavaScript apps, using modern uh, APIs from modern browsers to have this app cross-platform and, of course, to delight our users with the features which were not available for the web before, which were only uh, like part of uh, native app. So that's quite simple. And progressive is about progressive enhancement, but we'll return to this um, in some moments. Uh, before we go further, let's uh, check what are the latest news about progressive web apps, and there are lots of. Uh, I introduced this hashtag year of PWA on Twitter, and that's quite popular because you know, there are like breaking news uh, literally each week or sometimes um, each day. So uh, I mentioned cross-platform, right? And the main stream of the news is about new platform is here in, uh, in PWA, new browser supports this. Um, let's have a look. Uh, how does it look today at the moment? Uh, which platforms will we kind of review? Browser, obviously, Mo mobile, uh, desktop. Uh, why mobile? Because uh, these devices, uh, they were the catalyst of uh, progressive web apps idea in general because of two factors. First, uh, despite they are quite powerful, they still not as uh, performant as our desktops and uh, laptops. So we have to uh, optimize uh, somehow our experience. Uh, and uh, 
then network is not always uh, this uh, office or home Wi-Fi, so it's quite often um, like cellular network or no network at all, right? So this is n factor number one. But on the other hand, these devices are equipped with lots of uh, interesting uh, hardware features like sensors, uh, cameras, and so on. So and we want to use them in our web applications, not only um, in native. So uh, I'd say that PWA idea came from this um, mobile. Okay, uh, browsers. Everyone is uh, here. So this is uh, really exciting news, and it happened maybe a couple of months uh, ago when uh, uh, so Edge was the last uh, browser who pushed Service Worker API to production. So here we are talking not about developer build, not about Slack, but about something that's in production. Mobile platforms, two major platforms um, support uh, at least the basics of uh, service workers. And desktops, also really shiny look. Um, on Windows 10, progressive web apps, our JavaScript apps are, are first class citizens of uh, uh, like operating system in general, so they run totally like native ones. So they take part in all these uh, tiles. You can uh, uninstall them, give permissions, and so on. And support uh, for Mac and uh, Linux is also shipped to Chrome, but uh, hidden behind the flag. So you can you can actually test it how to. Uh, install your progressive web app to your, um, for example, Mac operating system via Chrome to make it um, like behaving like the native app. Uh, one more platform, which is not where we run our apps, but how we distribute our apps. And um, this is just, say, generic app store. So despite the, the name, this is, this is not uh, uh, tied to Apple only. Uh, and, and you see that uh, Microsoft uh, is also pioneering here. Uh, they uh, invented smart idea to grab, uh, to, 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 to surf uh, the web, to crawl the web using their Bing um, spider to find some good progressive web apps, good following some criteria, and to push them into Microsoft Store implicitly. So one day you wake up and you see that you have uh, 10,000 more users of your app. What happened? Your app appeared in uh, Microsoft Store. So you, you might want to go to claim the rights for this app and manage it to gather feedback, uh, uh, to take part in ratings. And uh, it's uh, just one channel of the distribution for free, after all, and without any effort from your side. Of course, you can, you can uh, remove this uh, if you don't wish to have it. Uh, so this was about cross-platform, uh, what it brings to our users. So this is, this is not like uh, getting started with PWA session. This is why we will be really uh, briefly in this in listing of uh, what we have here. So uh, first, what comes to your mind when you hear Progressive Web Service Worker is something about uh, optimizing network experience or about running um, our web in uh, offline. And that's true. So let's all together forget about uh, web is something about internet, is something about online, is something about uh, surfing the website. No, not anymore. Web is a full scale, fully featured uh, app development platform our days, thanks to Service Worker. Um, if we online, we can get uh, notifications. So it's also something uh, that was available only for native app. Lots of other cool stuff. Uh, we'll uh, list uh, maybe a couple of them today. So all this powered by our today's hero, which is service worker. And to like summarize everything, to create from set of our scripts, uh, HTML and uh, CSS files and app, we use simple JSON file with uh, some meta information um, following web app uh, specification, uh, web app manifest specification, which just uh, like creates an app from, uh, from all these assets. And if we uh, can imagine progressive web app as a car, then uh, web app manifest will be car body, so how it looks and how it feels. But service worker is definitely engine engine uh, or heart of progressive web apps or maybe brains of progressive web apps. 
Uh, again, uh, super short to give you, to, to just remind you what, what is it. Uh, this is actually a network, programmable network proxy layer between our application and outer world. It could be our API or third party API, something, uh, some, some, something on, on, on the network. And these two live uh, in browser or web view, but they live totally, totally different uh, uh, lives. Um, physically, if that were uh, even applicable to this set of bytes somewhere on the hard drive, this is a JavaScript file, JavaScript code, and um, in uh, terms of uh, browser internals, this is event-driven worker. So it wakes up only on some events and then uh, fall back, uh, fall, fall, fall to sleep immediately after it completed his job. My tip number zero, uh, know your tool set. So this is what we can use inside our service worker. This is what we can't. We can uh, put some um, approximate conditional lines. So instead of these two storage, we use these two. Instead of old gold uh, XML HTTP requests, of course, we want to use a uh, modern uh, version of this uh, fetch and no direct access to document object model, but we can uh, communicate with our app via some um, messaging. Uh, maybe you can uh, uh, see that all is green. Uh, all what green is uh, asynchronous. So it's uh, event uh, based or uh, promises based. And this is the nature of modern web, nature of service worker being uh, asynchronous. Uh, let's move forward to Next tip, and you remember in Progressive Web App's definition, I told that progressive word in Progressive Web App is uh, quite simple. It's not about uh, app thinking about progress, right? Uh, of, of course, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe it is, but it's uh, more uh, like utility um, term, which is just progressive enhancement. And to follow this idea, we have to go for feature detection. Uh, there is a really nice uh, repo and um, hosted app, which is uh, PWA feature detector, uh, which shows us um, that service worker API is not monolithic. It contains uh, many sub features, uh, contains many sub APIs, and not everything um, is in production in e every browser, obviously. And uh, it, was, it will al always be like this. And I believe you can uh, you can imagine. So uh, the one with more green uh, checks, this is Chrome, right? Second is uh, Firefox and uh, Safari. They just uh, just started, uh, so they have uh, offline capabilities and uh, payment request at the moment. So I just want to emphasize: we have to go for feature detection, and we start using it from line number one of uh, our work with Service Worker registering. Uh, yes, the code is not like so laconic like it could be, but this is how feature detection works after all. Uh, also, it's a really good idea to detect, as I mentioned, sub APIs, which is, for example, uh, Sync Manager, uh, which is uh, responsible uh, for um, Sync event in Service Worker. For now, it's available only in Chrome, so to not have lots of red lines in your console log in other browsers, we have to do this check. Uh, we can uh, show or hide some pieces of UI based on uh, features available. For example, if uh, the browser does not support push notifications, this is like only Safari left here, we can hide uh, this button, like subscribe me to push notifications completely, right? And we can go deeper uh, in um, notifications API, which is uh, working um, in um, um, collaboration with push API, we might uh, want to have uh, actions. So what happens when a user click, uh, clicks uh, like more? We, have, we could have list of available actions here. Uh, it's available in Chrome, but not in uh, Firefox, for example, at the moment. So based on this uh, feature detection, we might want to maybe resync this story a bit for um, other browsers. Good. Next, we have to find a proper time to register our service worker, and the rule is uh, simple. 
the later we do it, the better. You remember, this is progressive enhancement. And uh, in general, in a big picture, if something went wrong uh, with service worker, with registration, we have to make sure that it does not affect uh, the overall uh, run of um, our web app. Uh, yes, we might want to... Uh, we, we could uh, we, we could uh, miss uh, and uh, lose some uh, nice features, but um, this is something we deliver like on top of our main functionality, right? Uh, so to illustrate this, let's uh, have a look how does it work. So we go for feature detection, everything good. We register our service worker and let's check how it's loaded. So this is our app. Service worker started job so this is a network from him and from it and only the last line is our logo png so what happened we uh, it's first load experience we downloaded our main assets like index html uh, main js uh, whatever then this uh, code started to work and service worker started its own job by downloading the same assets to cache them to use them uh, after but browser cannot uh, run like many download threads in parallel, right? So there, there is a limitation on six or, or so. This is why um, our beautiful logotype was not loaded before uh, service worker finished its job. And this is uh, totally wrong. So we added, we m maybe added some features if, if service worker is correct and uh, it will take control on the, on the next load. But we ruined our first load experience, where we struggle literally for each millisecond. How to fix this? Very easy. Uh, let's um, register service worker and do all the next actions only after we loaded um, everything needed for the first run of our app. And then the picture is um, different. We load everything, lo big main bundle. It's just a test to emulate. Then our logo. And only after, after we are good uh, with everything, service worker started its own job. We, you, you can clearly see uh, which requests go from service worker by having this uh, small um, icon in front of the, the file name. So if you see this icon, it means that this request goes from service worker. OK, uh, now we know how to register this and uh, when to register this. Uh, but in some cases, uh, we might want to do a controversial action, right? Um, and we need a good mechanism to achieve this. We are all developers, right? We uh, introduce bugs sometimes, uh, and service worker is uh, code, which also could uh, go, go wrong. And then instead of uh, progressive enhancement, we'll get uh, regressive degradation. And uh, this is not theoretical this is what happened uh, with lots of uh, websites uh, maybe maybe one year ago just uh, just because um, specification of uh, fetch API was uh, updated a bit in terms of um, make it more secure and after the next version of uh, the browser which uh, follows this updated spec bam suddenly all uh, websites powered by some certain versions of service worker stopped working. Like you open the website and you see this. So this is this is something totally wrong, right? So we need rescue plan to uh, like remove everything. So to forget service worker, progressive apps, let's, let's just show something to our users. Our first uh, thought, let's, if we can register service worker in our like uh, main JS or index HTML, uh, we can unregister this. And it's true, th there is a method called unregister. Uh, but to unregister service worker, you have to unregister service worker. Why? Because in most, um, yes, it's kind of to understand what is recursion, you have to understand what is recursion. Uh, why? Uh, because our, say, wrong, broken service worker m most likely controls the page and actually it delivers uh, our main asset, like index.html or main.js, not from the network where we deployed uh, this unregistered, but from cache, where, we, where we it still says uh, register, right? Um, so we cannot uh, do this flow without updating service worker itself. So 
of course, we want to deploy uh, fixed or, or just empty service worker. Just so we, we need some time to fix. Let's uh, upload no operational one. Um, to do this, uh, after after deploy, after upload, we have to make sure that browser picks the new service worker, uh, not uh, taking it from HTTP cache. But yeah, let's start uh, with uh, how no operational could look like. Simple as that. So on install event, we uh, ask browser to skip waiting for all service workers stop working. There, there is quite a complex life cycle of service worker. You cannot just bam, uh, install a new one without using this method. So that, that's simple. Just our empty service worker wants to take control. If uh, the bug is so serious that we are good to uh, uh, scare our users um, by refreshing the UI in, in general, we can go for this option. This is uh, explicit go through the clients, which are open tabs in this context, and refresh them if, uh, if something totally wrong, right? But let's return to the question, how do we make sure that service worker was updated, was uh, how the browser took new one? Um, First, how it works. Uh, browser just uh, compares byte by byte. Uh, so if uh, like SWJS or you, you name this uh, service worker yourself, a new one, it takes this. Um, but we have to provide um, like special um, caching header on our server. Uh, it, it, it's like optional, but uh, it, it's smart. But we don't have this privilege for scripts. We use inside service worker, we are special method called import scripts. Uh, we can, you know, uh, use some external libraries in service worker as well. So this byte check will not work and we have to go for quite uh, ugly um, methods um, like renaming the files or giving some uh, hashes. This is definitely not what we um, as developers um, like. Luckily, specification was uh, updated and uh, uh, quite soon uh, we will have a uh, special property we can pass during uh, registration of uh, service uh, worker. And if we um, say none, the browser will always take uh, the freshest version of uh, service worker, ignoring uh, all the HTTP caching headers and so on. And uh, by the way, to illustrate uh, that um, sometimes uh, Firefox goes uh, first, this already implemented in Firefox, but not in Chrome yet. Let's go next. Pre-caching. So I mentioned uh, this pre-caching many times, and what is it after all? This is uh, something we... Uh, it's like um, quite obvious action when you register Service Worker and when it starts to grab the same uh, assets, same uh, version of our app, to put in cache, to serve it uh, later on the next start immediately instead of going to the network. And the rule is simple here. We have to be... Uh, like uh, confident with what we cache. Why? Let's have a look at an example. Um, let's imagine we have an uh, array of uh, files we want to cache, and one of them is non-existing, like 404. And in, in our service worker, we have a listen to in, in install event, and uh, cache API has method at all where we can pass the list of these uh, resources. It works like, like charm, but not in the case of um, HTTP errors. So if we try to cache something not existing or giving some like 500 error, we'll fail. Uh, in general, it should not be a big problem for our app. As I mentioned, uh, we will just lose uh, all nice extra features. So make sure that even if ser service worker fails for some reason, app still um, works. But Anyway, we want to fix this, right? And to do this, we have to make sure that there are no HTTP errors. As I mentioned, just make sure that each uh, file, you, each resource you ask uh, to be cached is, is real. Uh, next, service worker, event-driven worker, you remember, right? And um, browser will kill it after some uh, seconds of um, execution, uh, my kind of 30 seconds or, or so. D could be different for different browsers and versions. And after all, since we are talking about caching, our storage could be full. So we know how to deal with HTTP errors, right? Uh, most likely we don't want to 
uh, cache uh, some uh, movies, right, to not bypass execution time. But uh, what about storage? How can we check this? And uh, it's not unlimited, as I mentioned, and limits are different for different browsers and even can cal calculate it differently. Luckily, we have a special API called Storage Estimation API. So if you wish to put a kind of large file to your cache, my, my, my first advice, don't do this. Uh, if you have to do this, um, just check uh, if a cache is ready to accept these large ones. Okay, continue with HTTP stuff. Uh, sometimes we might want to cache uh, files from different origins, like third-party um, uh, resources or so. And what kind of and uh, w w without uh, course headers uh, implemented there? What kind of uh, re response will we get from uh, this kind of uh, resources? What what the characteristic of this uh, response? Right, it's opaque, um, and it has some limitations. So um, just imagine we uh, requested some image.png from like totally sort uh, party website. It will be displayed okay if we put it as a source in our HTML, but for our JavaScript, if we request this from JavaScript, this will be black box. We will not even understand was the request successful or not. The status will always be zero. This is why all our nice methods of cache API, like add and add all, will fail. Let's illustrate. Let's uh, try to use the same code um, and um, same code here, but uh, d d d different uh, resource to cache. We will see something like this in uh, our log. Obviously, no course, um, the service worker failed. What can we do here is to iterate through this kind of resources manually and uh, use special mode, no course. So that's also possible, but be very careful. Despite you have something in cache, you don't even know is their image or, or CSS or font or some kind of uh, 500 error. So just d double check. So these two cases with HTTP, and in my master slide deck there are more cases, uh, are here to emphasize that most likely we might want to use uh, some tooling to generate our service workers. It's really smart. Uh, luckily, all major frameworks have something related to progressive ABAP, to service workers, like uh, templates or uh, special flags in their CLIs to generate some scaffolds. Next, we have some nice builders to build uh, service workers for us, and we can check uh, our efforts. Just uh, one tool to explore Workbox. First, it has a quite decent set of features out of the box. Literally, you can um, set up this uh, pre-caching, dynamic caching, and even working offline with not even writing the code, it, it will be just more or less a configuration. But the killer feature is you can write your own service worker and extend it uh, by some methods, uh, some functionality exposed by Workbox. This is something very unique that exists only in Workbox at the moment. Uh, it, uh, Workbox is from Google, uh, PWA Builder from Microsoft. It also has nice set of uh, uh, all kinds of generators and the helpers for us, but its killer feature is uh, it can generate native projects for us if we wish, if we still wish to push our um, progressive ABAP to some kind of store, right? Of course, this will be not like progressive ABAP anymore. This will be native app, but we can build it without any hassle if we wish to use some APIs not available or not supported in Service Worker uh, API at the moment in this particular uh, platform. Uh, what we love as uh, developers, different kind of CLIs, right? And two linting tools I want to emphasize today, um, Sonarwall from Microsoft again, uh, and Lighthouse. Lighthouse actually is a part of uh, Chrome developer tools now. Before it started as extension, now it's uh, in official distribution on, of Chrome. Uh, they both uh, have nice uh, web services, but what could be useful for you um, is uh, CLI, because uh, we can integrate it in our app 
uh, in our con continuous integration flow. A uh, couple of minutes about user experience. Uh, we install our apps, right? Um, and let's pick the proper moment to bother user with this uh, prompt. Which prompt do I mean? Uh, this one. I bet you've seen this uh, on some websites, and as a developer, you trigger this uh, by uh, clicking at the home screen from your Chrome Dev Tools. Why so complex? Because um, to in in regular case when you are not developer, this prompt could be triggered only after some uh, heuristic happens. Uh, before that, it was something like two visits of this user to this uh, website uh, with uh, the break at least 15 minutes before. Now it's uh, like 30 seconds of uh, surfing this website by this user. Wh why do we have this? Just to make sure uh, from, from the browser side that user is interested in, in using this progressive web app. So maybe it's a good idea to uh, give uh, this prompt for them to install this app to home screen. And there are problems with this default one. So as we already seen, the moment is uh, quite unpredictable for us, for developers. Uh, from a user side, it could be quite interruptible in experience, especially on mobile devices when this, hey, do you want to install this app? Uh, takes uh, half of your screen and if you enter some, for example, large uh, form, you will be uh, sad. Uh, on the other hand, to do it explicitly, manually, not everyone will find it in the browser menu. And there are some attempts uh, to find different options how we could uh, offer installation, but they are all like not, not very visible, right? Discussion is uh, still uh, ongoing. And uh, on this um, URL, you'll find a um, uh, GitHub repo with uh, folks from browsers trying to figure out uh, what's the best way here. But what do we have uh, now? We, t t so first uh, uh, spec was changed and now we have to have explicit code to show this uh, uh, prompt, but this will n not happen uh, before uh, this, uh, before install prompt event happen. So we prevent uh, default of uh, this event and uh, inside our like custom event, we might want to have the code like this uh, where event prompt actually shows this uh, prompt. Uh, still open questions here. Um, can we give uh, to developers the, the way to show this prompt anytime? Uh, is it possible at all to install Progressive Web App without visiting, visiting website? It could be useful for different catalogs, right? And for enterprise, how to say push uh, our nice uh, corporate app to hundreds of our employees. Not, uh, there is no way at the moment, uh, but let's wait. My last uh, point, um, I, I mentioned other cool things, right? And uh, service worker is not only about network, not only about caching. So just uh, about quite complex uh, concept in a simple code and in uh, 15 seconds. We can implement support of non-supported formats for our browsers. And this is nice example by uh, my friend Kenneth, who uses uh, WebAssembly, another cool feature of modern web, uh, to actually support WebP format in Firefox. So it's uh, idea is simple. We intercept request to WebP resource in our service worker. Our service worker um, gets this uh, resource, decodes, and uh, puts it to the browser in form of BMP, and every browser supports this, of course. So this, this is something that really mind twisting. My last tip. This is the link uh, of um, open Slack team dedicated to progressive web apps. Uh, now we are almost uh, one and a half thousand developers with uh, folks uh, from major browsers and uh, libraries. And uh, my wildest plan is to organize Progressive Web Conf this year, where I want to, again, gather folks from browsers and folks from community to understand where do we move next. And thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. That's all from me.